Precious Father, hallelujah. Lord, we're coming for you again, oh God. Lord, we're coming for you this morning, oh God. Lord, just to tell you, thank you, oh God. One more time, oh God. To tell you, oh God, we appreciate you, oh God. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for everything you're doing for us, oh God. Oh God, we say thank you one more time, oh God. We're not the day, oh God, the day that you made, oh God. You said we rest in the oh God, the big land, oh God. We thank you right now, oh God. We're not the day you keep us, oh God. It's such a time as this, oh God. Lord, we ask you, oh God, to keep our mind, oh God. Stay fast on you, oh God. We ask you there, oh God, to keep that hunger, oh God, and that thirst in us, oh God. Right now, oh God, it's such a time as this, oh God. Keep us, oh God, but we need you right now, oh God. Look at our nation right now, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, realize, oh God, it's going to talk to the right now, oh God. Realize, oh God, you can be the drug, God. You see the answer, oh God, to this old world, oh God. We're going to say thank you, oh God. Look at the church, oh God. All of us, the name of oh God. Look at our church today, oh God. Look at our service, oh God. Look at our praise and worship, oh God. Look at our leader right now, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Come in today, oh God. Touch somebody, oh God. On this faithful God, oh God. Touch somebody, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Realize, oh God. You're looking for it, oh God. It's true, oh God. You're looking for the answer, oh God. In that heart, oh God. You're looking for the answer, oh God. In a faith right now, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We realize, oh God, that you're the answer, oh God. Oh God, you can seek me first, oh God. The kingdom of God, oh God. And all.
Prince of Peace. Uh, he's my everything. Uh, his name is Jesus. Uh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Uh, my way out of nowhere. Uh, hallelujah, my light in the darkness. Uh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Uh, he is my healer. Uh, he is my Alpha and Omega. Uh, he is the beginning and the end. Uh, his name is Jesus. Uh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Uh, Hallelujah. He soothed my doubts and he calmed my fears. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Oh, open your mouth and say, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
says that we are not be saying God, but God has a proper name. God is just Jim, but God got a proper name. Woo! <laughs> and what is his proper name?
education. Uh-huh. Your education ain't gonna help you. Uh-huh. Sometimes the devil throw that to your theologically trained mind ain't gonna be able to comprehend it. Uh-huh. Because the devil didn't go to your seminary. Uh-huh. <laughs> he could care less about what Dr. So-and-so say. <laughs> Uh, sometimes how you, 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 you need to learn how to fight. Can I say this and I'm yes. 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 They went to Vietnam in this conflict to fight. Mm-hmm. And when they got over there, they made the mistake of trying to go in there and fight like they fought on every other land. Yeah. But what they didn't understand was that these Viet Cong was trained in the art of guerrilla warfare. In other words, they knew how to make a, a, a bush, a man look like a bush when it really was a man. They could dig a hole in the ground and hop. And so you walking in there with your big guns and your bazookas and your grenades, but you don't know where to throw it at because you can't see the enemy because he is fighting you guerrilla warfare. <laughs> Hallelujah. My God. So what they had to do, they had to go back and say, listen, baby, if you're going to fight this war, you can't play by the rules. You're going to have to fight dirty. And what I'm trying to tell somebody, spiritually, you in Vietnam, and the devil ain't fighting fair, and you're not going according to what they taught you in Sunday school, you're going to have to fight dirty. You're going to have to listen to God to get a download of information how to go in the jungle and come back out with the victory. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to give. 
For you declare in your word, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Now, Father, bless this seed that we sow. For it is a seed that we sow and not a debt that we own. Father, we declare over our lives and we shall never be broke another day in our life. We declare that all of our needs are supplied according to your riches and glory. That you are our shepherd and we shall have no lack. We thank you, O oh God. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to praise the Lord. Let the musicians favor us with a suitable tune. As we hear the cash out go. This is Anything. 
God looking at somebody saying, I'm not lacking nothing. You hear what I said? If I want filet mignon, I can get it. I know this is crazy, but if somehow, if I wanted a mignon, if I really wanted a mignon, it would be mine. If I really wanted a mignon, I could drive in this parking lot right now. Chapter. 
And then I'm going to attempt to read verses 19 through 31. St. Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. Hallelujah. Listen to what the word of the Lord says. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his souls. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried away by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this land. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest the good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they that which pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from hence. And he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would send him to my father's house. For well, I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abram said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham. But if one went unto them from the dead, they would repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses, and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Everything that people do and believe is related to their perspective on life. Your marriage, the way you rear your children, your work ethic or lack thereof, is all based upon your perspective. Amen. This even includes your world view, how you see and process the issues of the world comes from your perspective. Now those that are born again uh, have or should I say should have an internal perspective on life because of what we know about God, mm -hmm. his word, yes. and the life to come. Mm -hmm. It affects our decision-making process. However, those that have a worldly perspective, they view life or, or their views on this life is a kind of like a state of finality. Meaning, if I'm going to live, I'm going to do everything now because when I'm dead, it's all over. Yeah. So I better do it now. They really don't worry about the decisions that they make because to them, the ends justify the means. So if I cheat on my taxes, or if I have an affair on my wife or my husband, it really doesn't matter. Because uh, ultimately, I will not be held accountable to totally because when I'm, I die, I'm dead. Yeah. 
This, my friends, is a very dangerous and erroneous perspective. Uh -huh. Because we know that God is real yes. and that his, his existence tells us that one day we will all give an account to the deeds that we have done and the life that we have lived. And this, my friends, when we believe this, changes the way we view and see life. Mm -hmm. And that's what we call an eternal perspective. And that's what I want to talk about today, the eternal perspective. Father, in the name of Jesus, may we do no damage to your word, but speak that which is right. Just sound, which is true. Let this word have free course. Give us revelation knowledge. Bless in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hopefully y'all love shouting and you feel good. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because in most sermons today uh, are void of an eternal perspective. Most of everything that we preach and shout, testify about, generally encompasses this earth. My car, my house, my health, how I'm treated. Praise the Lord. Black lives matter. All lives matter. Sex. No sex. Y'all quiet. Education. A perspective on life, if you're not careful will be limited to the scope of what you see and understand of the earth. In fact, the dictionary tells us that perspective is a particular attitude toward or a way of regarding something. It is a point of view. Perspective is the way individuals see the world. It comes from their personal point of view and is shaped by their life experiences, their values, and their current state of mind. Even the assumptions that they bring into a situation. Yeah. Hallelujah. A whole lot of other things. But these all go into the uh, proverbial soup to form the way I see things. In other words, two people can be looking at the same occurrence and perceive something totally different based upon their experience in life. One man was in Florida and the lady came and asked him a question and said, listen, I just moved here from Oklahoma. What is it like here? He said, well, what was it like where you came from? Oh, the people were warm, they were caring, they looked, we looked out for one another. It was a great place. He says, this place is the same way. Later on that day, another lady came and asked him, said, I just moved here from New York. What, what, what is this place like? He said, well, what was it like where you came from? They grew. You know, the government is corrupt. They treat you bad. That's why we moved out, because we had a rough time. He said, well, this place is just like where you came from. Because you will see something through the lens of your experience and your, praise the Lord, education, who you dealt with. Even spiritually, having an eternal perspective, praise the Lord, is uh, taught by what you were exposed to. Now some people, praise the Lord, may have a religion. 
religion, but they have never been exposed to an eternal perspective. They relegate, praise the Lord, uh, uh, God to Sunday morning. Amen. And past the Sunday morning experience, that's all that I'm thinking about eternally. So I can go to my job as a boss and cheat and rob and steal uh, from people. I go, amen, as an employee and, and cheat time and, 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 and pray the Lord take extended lunch breaks and I, and I can pray the Lord go home and kick the dog and beat my wife and, and, and I, I can cuss you out and pray the Lord. I can do all kinds of things. I go and get plastered on Saturday night and then come back on, uh, you know, and, and say, well, you know, God is good and everything, and don't feel no remorse. Well, that's just how people do. That's how life is. Because you have no eternal perspective. Now, Jesus is teaching here. And praise the Lord. In his effort, amen, to give people a view or another view of eternity, he allows us to see a scene of the afterlife. Mm -hmm. Now, this is important, church. And so that's why I gotta take my time and talk this. I can't, you know, hoop this one. Amen. Uh, it is important because who have ever came back from the dead to tell you anything about the afterlife? Everybody, praise the Lord, talks about a man heaven, but ain't none of us been there. Praise the Lord. And even those that uh, come back and say that they've had an experience of hell or an experience of heaven is only a vision. You've never actually been there. Praise the Lord. Yet, Jesus is giving us a view or a scene in what's happening in the afterlife. Can I talk for just a few minutes? Okay. Wow. And he tells us about the rich man and Lazarus. Now let me give you a disclaimer. This particular uh, tale here is not a parable. Mm -hmm. The story of the rich man and Lazarus is not a parable. It is something that has actually happened in history. Somebody said, well, Pastor, why would you say that? Because in every parable, they only give them a, a, a certain pronoun like a certain rich man or a certain, praise the Lord, son, praise the Lord. And so, and that parables are stories that are told that uh, reveal spiritual truth. But here, Jesus actually names, praise the Lord, the beggar, and his name is Lazarus. If you go back and read any other parable that Jesus ever taught, nobody ever had a name, but Lazarus has a name. Yeah. This is not a parable. This is a real view into what happens when you die. Can I talk for just a minute? And the next thing, the next disclaimer I want to knock out, this is not an indictment on rich people. This is not saying that just because you're rich, you go to hell, and just because you are poor, you go to heaven. You know, that would be such a low standard to go to heaven. All you got to do is be poor. Well, dog, I should have stayed right where I was. Amen, and I can go to heaven. But the truth of the matter is the issues, a man of loss and salvation go deeper than one's material possessions. But the truth of the matter is that sometimes material possessions will affect one's perspective and one's view of uh, eternal. And it's sad but true, those that have great wealth and riches many times tend to have the worst eternal perspective that you can have. Because their riches give them a safe haven and a defense of this life. And those amen, that tend to be financially destitute seem to need God more. And so they are more open to hearing the message of the gospel. Uh -huh. So that's not to say that a rich 
which man cannot be saved, but it is to say that, praise the Lord, it is harder for a rich man to be saved because many times his perspective on life is based upon the having of things. And so he's never quite been able to see that God is the one that is supplied him with his riches unless he has been taught an eternal perspective. Yes. Am I making sense in here? Yes. And so Jesus begins to talk a man about, praise the Lord, uh, this rich man. And the Bible says that this rich man has some bad rags, as the old folks said. He, he was clothed in purple. Purple, amen, at that time was an expensive color. You just, everybody didn't have purple, praise the Lord. Uh, uh, the, 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 the virtuous woman, praise the Lord, hallelujah, because she is virtuous, she has purple. Purple is a sign of royalty. And so this man had it going on. And then, praise the Lord, he fared sumptuously, meaning he ate very well every day. Hallelujah. And looking at this, what the Bible says in verse 20, he said, but there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of swords. I want to take a dime and part right there in just a minute. Amen. Praise the Lord. This man was rich. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This man had uh, uh, the finest things of life. He didn't want for a whole lot of things. But the Bible says that in his richness, amen, there was a beggar laid at his gate. Right. Hallelujah. I want to tell you this morning, this afternoon, that when you are doing well at an era in your life, God will often lay something at your gate that you have to look at and depending on where you are spiritually will give you a right or a wrong perspective. Hear me really good. What is the better that is laid at your gate? Because how you respond to what is laid at your gate determines what your real eternal perspective is. This man lived the good life. And Jesus is not indicting him for living the good life. But he is indicting him that in living his good life, he did not pay attention to the beggar that was laid at his gate. Oh, can I go a little deeper? Come on, come on. It wasn't all the beggars of the world. It wasn't all the homeless of the world. But it was the beggar at his gate. And I submit to you, you can feed all of the homeless people of the world and still get in trouble with God because you're not dealing with the beggar that's at your gate. Hallelujah. Sometimes you are a philanthropist. You are a giver. Praise our God. But you have a racist bone in your body. Amen. You give. Amen. Praise the Lord to all of those. The United uh, Negro College Fund. You praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When Christmas time comes. Amen. With Samaritan's Purse. You package all of those little shoe boxes and sin. All that nice stuff to Africa. But right here in this country where a man, praise the Lord, was choked out to death. You have no compassion with the black folk that live in your world and in your neighborhood. Oh yes, you, amen, be missionaries. I know all these churches that send missionaries all over the world but won't send nobody to go to the project that's just across the street in their next neighborhood because, amen, they're looking at the world is the antithesis 
of what is going good in your life. What do you mean, Pastor? If you have a good marital relationship, God will send people in your life whose marriage relationships are jacked up. And that is the beggar that is laid at your gate. And so you can be a great giver, but you're not one amen that helps the beggar at your gate. And you still are coming up lacking with God. Are you that not making sense? Praise the Lord. Is this, is this? So, 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 so many times, God will send a beggar to your gates. Amen. The Bible says, hallelujah, it was laid at his gate. Go ahead, go ahead. Meaning, he saw this man every day. My Lord. Walked by, dressed in purple. Wow. Every day. He walked by looking hungry. Jesus. Eating a chicken. Meal. Strip down on one side of the front Wow. Hey, the grip, man, you got to be greedy. Mm -hmm. You see a man hungry and eat the gristle. You could at least get him the gristle. Right. Right. The Bible says this man desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. He didn't even want to sit at the table with you. He didn't want equality with you. My Lord. He just went home. And notice Jesus didn't go into the detail of why the man was poor. Didn't say whether he had a drug addiction. Didn't say, praise the Lord, why he was poor and, and what he did. Did he have a job? Did he work? See, in the scope of eternity, the why of a man getting to it is not as important as the fact that he is there and what he's going to deal with it now. Yes. I have a problem with folk that will march at abortion clinics and, and, and will berate women for having an abortion, but then when we ask you for help, you want to cut food stamps. And you want to cut things that help the babies that are born. You, you say that you are pro-life, but that means you're only pro-life in the womb. But when the baby get born, praise the Lord, now all of a sudden you ain't pro-life no more. You're only pro-life, amen, praise God, to, to keep the women from aborting the child. But then when you say black lives matter now, amen, you ain't pro-life no more. You're saying, well, 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 let the police have the Because that's not where I'm going, but I'm dealing with an eternal perspective. But if 
So you beat me. Yeah. And then you complain that I'm crying. Yeah. Like in the church, a child go to do something wrong, and you go, sweat. Yeah, you be crying. Well, you just made him cry. <laughs> And we have the free. And 
these are not the doings of an unjust God, but rather the consequences of a world that chooses to live apart from God. Amen. Y'all don't like what I'm saying. Some people, praise the Lord, that are activists, amen, take issue with the Bible because it, it addresses the issue of slavery in the context of how a master should treat his slave and how a slave should respond to his master. And so you say, praise the Lord, the Bible is pro-slavery, so why would I believe in the Bible? And then what you don't understand, praise the Lord, is that the Bible is not pro-slavery, praise the Lord, the Bible is pro-mankind. The Bible says, amen, praise the Lord, that he gave man dominion over the earth. And what you need to understand about God, when he gives you dominion, he steps back and let you run it the way he is. He does not interfere with your dominion. But understand this, that when you stand before him like the rich man, you're going to have to give an account to how you use your dominion. So God was not the one that created the system of racism or the system of slavery. Man who had the dominion created. And so since a man, man created, God said, this is how you behave and this is how you deal in slavery. Are you understand? He deals with life as it comes, praise God. And I know if you don't think right, you don't have a biblical worldview. Amen, praise God. But all slavery is not the same kind of slavery. There is some slavery, praise the Lord, that is an uh, indentured servitude. Amen, praise the Lord. That the slave is not like we what we were done when we got here in America. When they brought us here in America, they didn't treat us like a servant. Amen. They treat us like we were animals. We were sold like we were cows and treated like dogs and beef. So it's a whole different type of slavery. And if you don't take time to arrest somebody who has this kind of worldview, they will view the Bible in a term that is not meant to be viewed in. So baby, you have to take the time and talk to folk, amen. Because in the absence of knowledge, there is a great capital of ignorance that will askew your worldview. Yes. Y'all quiet. Preach. And then number two, death is the common denominator of us all. The rich man lived in wealth, but when he died, he was poor. Lazarus lived in poverty, but when he died, he was in the richest place he could ever be. Because the common denominator is death. It does not matter how much money you have, you will die. It does not matter how famous you are, you will die. It doesn't matter how anointed you are, you will die. Amen. Prophet Nathan Simmons was an anointed prophet, but he died. Y'all don't like what I'm saying. Many regarded, amen, Daddy Grace as a false prophet. Well, whatever he was, he died. Praise the Lord. Dr. King, praise the Lord, was a wonderful speaker in the civil rights movement. But guess what? He died. Billy Graham was one of the greatest evangelists, amen, of our time. But he died, praise the Lord. Uh, the rich and the poor, the good and the bad, everybody dies. And so this is what Jesus is saying. Your eternal view needs to take into account that you're not going to live in this world forever. I want you to understand something. The Bible says, hallelujah, that a man's days on the earth is three score and ten and four score by reasonable strength. Three score is sixty plus ten makes seventy. Four score, and a score is twenty years. Four score is eighty years. And then Moses talks about that the Spirit of the Lord, amen, will strive with man for a hundred and twenty years. Hallelujah. So let's just give him the benefit of the doubt and say, from about a hundred and twenty years and on down, this is your lifespan. And if you look at, amen, 120 years, if you look at 80 years in the scope or in the span, amen, of eternity, that is a very short time, praise the Lord. But what you do in these 70, 80 years, are you hear what I'm saying, has a lasting effect to how you will spend your eternity to which there is no end to it. And so having an eternal perspective means that I'm going to be
my injustice, and I want to deal with the reality of truth. Let me say that again. I want to deal with the reality of hell. I want to deal with the reality of divine justice. And I want to deal with the reality of truth. Amen. And there are several other realities, but those are the three I want to hit today. If I can keep my audience. Praise the Lord. The first thing I want to tell you today, hell is real. And anybody that tells you that it is not, they are deceived. Anybody that tells you that hell, amen, is a fairy tale, they have been deceived by the devil. Mm -hmm. there, are there are religions that say that God is too kind to send people to hell. Mm -hmm. They teach, amen, the doctrine of annihilation, that the wicked dead just cease to exist anymore. And that is not true. Because if a wicked man who has done wrong on this earth ceases to exist, that means he never receives for the justice that was done, amen, while he was living. And so the nature of God is his justice. Now, we'll get into that in a little bit, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But hell, amen, is a definite place. And hell, praise the Lord, is in the earth. It is in the earth and it has chambers. Praise God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. Hell in the Old Testament is called Sheol. Amen. And it starts with the grave. Praise the Lord. The grave, amen, is the opening to hell. Now what you must understand is that before Jesus came, everybody that died went to hell. Let me say that again. Before Jesus came and died for us, everybody that died went to hell. But hell had different levels and compartments. Just like, amen, heaven has different levels. Amen, hell has different compartments and levels. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. And, and, and Deuteronomy, amen, 32 and 22. You can write this down. He says that his anger, meaning the anger of God, is the fire that burns to the lowest hell. So there is fire in hell. And the fire, amen, praise the Lord, is ignited by the anger of God. The Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. So hell fire, praise the Lord, burns with the anger of God against sin, praise the Lord. Against, as much as God loves you, he hates sin as much as he loves you. Now if he loved you enough that he would send his only begotten son, just think how much he hates sin that people do, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so hell is set on the fire of God's anger, praise the Lord. You'll find that in Deuteronomy 32 and 22. And the grave is the entry into the chambers of hell, praise the Lord. Can I go a little bit further? I can't tell you everything. You'll have to go back and research. Hell was not originally created for man. Man was not created to die. Man was created to live forever. In fact, when God created man, death was not a man of thought. Death only came, praise the Lord, hallelujah, when man sinned and disobeyed God. Hallelujah. So the answer to sin was death. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? So hell was not originally created for man, but it was created for the devil and his angels. And you will find this in the book of St. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 41. Amen. These, amen, are sent to hell, which was prepared, amen, for the devil and his angels. Many of you know that there was a fight. That's why I can't move this. I have to tell you this. There was a fight in heaven, praise the Lord. Amen. Satan rebelled against God. Lucifer rebelled. And as a result of his rebellion, he was kicked out of heaven. Praise the Lord. And re relegated to the earth, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And God made sure that these, that, that Satan and the angels that rebelled against him would, amen, be in everlasting torment in eternity. So, Satan understands that there are the flames of hell that he has to face, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so his job is to deceive and to fool people every day to make them think that they can live any kind of way and still be saved. I want you to know that everybody that dies is not saved and they're not a good man because a man they die. You know they can live like the devil all day. Children all over town. And the moment they die, 
they automatically become an instantaneous saint. And the preacher will do his best, amen, to put you in heaven because he don't want, amen, the family to be mad at him because you know they got to give him that money for preaching that eulogy. And so, you know, the more he talks about what that man did, praise our God. In fact, they teach us, they train us. When you preach a eulogy, don't talk about, amen, the, 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 the sins of the deceased. Just, amen, comfort the family because you can't do nothing about his sin. No way. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? But the truth of the matter is, everybody that dies does not go to heaven, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There are some people that die and go to hell. Amen. Isaiah, amen, chapter 14 says that hell enlarges itself, amen, daily. Every day, the bounds of hell enlarges itself. Every day. What does that mean? That means people die every day and they drop into hell, praise God. Hallelujah. It is real. It is a real place. And it is a place that people that don't know the Lord, they go there. Every day there is a entrance made into hell. The thing about it is, heaven has dimensions. There are three gates in the east, three gates in the north, three gates in the west, three gates in the south. It has dimensions, which means heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. But hell has no dimensions. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger every day. And if God would allow this earth to last in eternity, then hell would have an eternal size of proportion. Can you imagine how many people went to hell since the world was created? Hallelujah. Since Satan was kicked out of heaven. Hell is a big place. And it is the size of glory to God. Hallelujah. It was not created for you. Uh, Alexis, hell was not created for you. The body that you have right now was not created to withstand the fires of hell. So that's why a person that chooses not to choose Jesus as a Lord and Savior, just like as a born again person, I get a glorified body to be able to withstand hell. Because I can't stand heaven. In this body, heaven is too powerful. Have you ever experienced the power of God touch you? And it just touch you so good that it's like people faint and fall and they get drunk and stab and pray for and, 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 and if you continue to experience that on an ongoing level, it's like electricity, it will take you out of here. Because the human body cannot withstand the presence of God out there. That's why you have to have a glorified body to experience heaven. Well, the same way you have to have a glorified body to experience heaven, you have to have a supernatural body to experience the punishment of hell. Yes. God going to give you a body. So the Bible calls it the place where the worm dieth not. And, and so you are the worm. The worm, the worm is in fire and it does not die. And as angry as God is about your sin, Hallelujah, that's as hot as the fire burns in your life. Preachers don't preach this no more. They just say, praise God, you make mistakes. And they just say, it's just a weakness or, or it's just an issue that you have in your life. But what I'm trying to tell you, those that are not born again are relegated to the fires of hell. And I know this is not, praise the Lord, a popular message, and I didn't care for it to be popular, but hell is real. And one of the most deceitful things that Satan could have ever done is to deceive you and to tell you that hell is not real. Praise God. Because if I don't believe in a hell, praise God, then I really don't believe that I am accountable to a God for my sins. I know if we teach that God is just some kind of a sugar daddy that's going to welcome everybody that go into heaven. You strip or going up and down the pole. When you die, you going to hell. If you don't repeat. Hallelujah. You that is laying in the bed next to the person that you are not married to. And it's funny, praise God. You sleep with them, but you get down on your knees and y'all say y'all prayers together. You go to the table and you eat breakfast together. And you play house, but you're not married. You are shacking up, praise God. And the Bible says, hallelujah, that whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. You fornicators, praise God. You are going to be relegated to, amen, the bowels of hell. Y'all don't like my talk over here. The 
Those of you that like to take your clothes off in front of the camera and pose nude, amen, to give men something to look at, to give women something to look at and to lust after. Hallelujah. You are going to hell. And those of you that like to look at it, you going right along with them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why is that? Because, amen, every sin must receive a just recompense. Thank <laughs> you. 
You got to show everything. You got everything. to flaunt everything. And if everything. a preacher, God forbid, a preacher tell you Read. that you need to cover up, yeah. you call it hate speech. Uh -huh. You call it hate speech. Yeah. How can I preach the truth today? Read. Lord God, I might use some followers today.
this, but I better get it. I better get it while it's in my heart. Somebody get that for me. Give me 1 Corinthians, amen, 7 and 1. 1 Corinthians 7 and 1. I want, I want you to put that in your queue. 1 Corinthians 7 and 1. I'm trying to tell you that hell is real. I might have to finish this another time. It's almost 1 o'clock. You better preach. You better preach. Read that. Not concerned with things world. Uh -huh. He wrote unto me. I'm going to tell you what he said now. It Read it. It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Listen. It is good. Uh -huh. said, when you talk about a man, you talk about a single man. It's good. Stand up, sister. <laughs> it is good for a man not, not to touch her. He ain't mad. Why did I touch you? Something happened when we touch. Okay, can I be honest? Yes. That's what you want to do. You want to get close and touch.
and remain saved living for so long. Right, no, it's the truth. It's the truth. Because the fact that ain't nobody can ever see you. Right, right. There you go. And you got yourself. You ain't talking about Jesus all the time. Show money. Show money. You speaking in another kind of tongue. Well, reach here. Yes, sir. Yeah. Everything saved. So what you have to do, what you have to do, my Lord, you have to use wisdom. Jesus, that's right. You have to use wisdom. Because some of the things we do, we can not say the That's right. You do stupid things, and then you end up praying. Jesus. And then when somebody tells you it was wrong for you to be praying, not be mad. That's the problem. Check the day. Here I'm a judge. No, baby, you did something stupid. Right, right. Jesus. I got 11 children, so I don't have a problem with a pregnant woman. I help. Yes, Amen. Right. In fact, I love the process. 99%. Jesus. Jesus. But I'm legal. Yeah. I got a license. Yeah. I got a license. Cut it out. Cut it out. You mean to tell me? Yes. 
because the rebellion of sin is so deep in man. People are rebellious, just like this message I'm preaching today. Somebody watching me right now that don't like what I'm saying. Because uh -huh. they think that I should preach a message of love. Yeah. Baby, that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah, that's right. I'm trying to tell you, don't go to that place. Don't go to that place. God died so you didn't have to go to this place. Yes, yes, yes. I got to hurry up and quit, y'all, because my time is this. Praise the Lord. There's divine justice in him. Let me hurry up. I got to run through this. Come on. Every wrong is right in any turn. You may never get complete justice on this earth. Black lives may never matter on right. earth. That's true. Even, they may never really fully matter. Right. You may never get them to pass legislation. Even if you get them to pass legislation, now you got to get active. Yeah. Just like when they, when they pass desegregated schools. They still have to send the armed guards to go down and make them children, make them let the little brown and black children go to school. Because man in his heart is defiant. The They'll tell you that you need to obey the laws of the land. But the governor tells you, stay home, keep a mask on. And you cuss out the clerk because they say you can't come in without a mask. Uh -huh. You march down to the Capitol building with guns and rebel flags. Because you're tired of the government being closed. But what you the same one that said that we supposed to honor the king and obey the law? You a hypocrite. Amen. Amen. Law and order. Mm -hmm. As long as it benefits you. Yeah. Oh, but in eternity, everything is going to be made right. Yes. There are some things that God will give me on earth, but I will never be able to fully enjoy what God has until I am in peace with him. Because he's going to make sure everything is right. There is no persecution with God. His God is just. That's why there's a hell. Because he's just. Lord. Okay. Let, me, let me deal with the reality of truth. Because I'm going to. Y'all know I can't. I don't even know how to come back from this. I don't even know how to. <laughs> I'm get y'all shot. <laughs> I don't even know how to get in my high horse right now. I'm just like, I'm done. <laughs> the reality of truth. Check this out. Let me get this, let me get this one because I got to finish it. He says, send Lazarus to dip his finger in the water and cool my tongue because I'm tormented in this way. And he says, I can't do that. First of all, it wouldn't be divine justice because you got all the good stuff and he got all the bad stuff. But now, he got a righteous death. So he gonna, a man that dies a righteous death versus a man that dies a sinful death ain't going to get the same treatment in the afterlife. I don't care who, oh, I can see God welcoming me to heaven. I don't care what men say. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Hey. <laughs> Everybody ain't going there, but I'm sorry to bust your bubble, baby. Mm -hmm. You sitting there getting ready to roll a blunt, blunt and smoke it? Oh, yeah. Let it knock your heart off. You're going to hell. Mm. Oh. I just want to watch the way just a little bit to get that little inspiration. <laughs> yeah. I like the way Pastor Scott preaching. Let me shout. <laughs> Make me feel good. And then just as soon as you hear this message, you go right back to living and doing Come just what you're doing. Don't you know you're playing with your soul? Yes. 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 Right. And the love that I'm trying to show you is to tell you that it is wrong. Amen. And not act like you are right. Because mm -hmm. I may never, some of you that are watching my life, I may never meet you in person. Amen. But I can tell you right now. Yes. And I love you enough. That at the risk of you being mad at me calling me a judgmental preacher, uh -huh. that I can tell you the truth. Yes. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. He says there's a gulf fixed between heaven and hell. And nobody from heaven can go to hell, and nobody from hell can make it to hell. Mm -hmm. That's what he says. But I can see you in heaven while I'm in hell. Amen. 
Those of you whose parents made a conscious decision to be saved, and you did, you're going to see them dancing in heaven while you in here. But you know how your mama always come to your rescue? And always, she ain't going to care that you burn in here. She cared and prayed enough for you while she was on earth. When she get to heaven, that same body and compassion she ain't going to have. Because it's going to be gone. Because you have a chance. Ain't no more praying for you again. She up there dancing, giving God the glory. You burning in here. Screaming and hollering and gnashing teeth. And she don't even care. The preacher that spent years trying to preach you out of your sin and father. He's in there giving God the glory. And you burning in the flame. And you can see. He don't see you. When you see him. And that's hell or love. Mm -hmm. to, to, to see folk experiencing the joys of everlasting joy. While you, because you chose not to invite God into your life. You chose not to live for him. You rather party. You rather a man club and hang with your friends and drop it like it's hot. Mm -hmm. Tattoo your body up and down. Pierce every hole in your body. You chose to do, and then when somebody tell you, where did you read that in the Bible? Jesus. Okay. Look, God from a burning man. Trying to help me. Help us. You, every day you say no to God, you're making the go. Why? Why? And so he says this, and I'm closing. I can't do no more. Than he says, Well, Father Abraham, if you can't send Lazarus to cool my tongue, and if I can't be comfortable, if there's no help for me, he go again, he go again, watch this. Send Lazarus. You want to see Lazarus on all these areas. <laughs> see Lazarus, I got five brothers. Five is a little grace. <laughs> he said, I got five brothers. See Lazarus to warn one them not to come to this place. And he says, Abraham says, they got Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. Mm -hmm. No, Father Abraham. Surely, if one come back from the dead, they hear him and repent. And Abraham said the most true. He says, listen to me. They have Moses and the prophets. Meaning they got the word of God. They got preachers that I'm called and I'm anointed to tell the truth. And if they don't hear the word preach, if they don't hear divine truth, he said they won't even be persuaded to repent, even though one comes back from the dead. And he was speaking of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus came back from the dead and folks still don't believe.
had dancers with flags at this funeral. They had paid mourners going behind the cat.
Don't be proud. I'm not worried about where you come from. Whether you're white, black, or whether your color don't even register on the scale, don't matter. I love you. I, I, don't, I don't even care if you're gay, straight, heterosexual, homosexual, asexual, non-sexual, don't know what kind of sex you are. I don't care about your sex. I care about your soul. The issue is your soul, not your sex. God is in you. Woo! There is no power that can break the power. God is calling somebody right now. This is your season. This is your time. Thank you. 
Rest rule of life is for now and for now. 